So I think there's a big difference between playing safe and playing smart and playing scared golf. Hey guys, welcome to today's video. Today, I'm going to show you guys a little bit of a different format. I'm going to be including the new GPS systems installed here at TPCKL, which is going to be beneficial for this video. So over here, hole 1 is a par 4. As you'll be able to see clearly here, there are bunkers on the left and the right, and the right bunkers are reachable, and the first left bunkers are reachable as well for me. And as you'll be able to see as well, in front of the green, there are two bunkers short and bunker left of the green. So when the pin is tucked left, it is the, those bunkers on the left is in play as well. And today the pin is on the left side of the screen. So those bunkers are definitely in play. You do not want to go over. It is much better to give yourself an uphill chip or, well, make sure you're on the green if you can, but it's much better to avoid those bunkers because they're not easy going downhill and down slope. So I am hitting an eight iron here on this first hole. And what I really wanted to talk about today is the difference between playing safe or smart golf versus playing scared golf. So for instance, on a tee shot like this for this hole, when I said those bunkers on the right and left were reachable, how do you determine whether or not you should hit a driver or maybe you should even hit a three wood if those bunkers are reachable? So how do you know when you are playing smart golf by using a different club of the tee or even for your approach shot and when are you playing scared golf so we will talk a little bit more about that through the video but let's just see over here as i said just now i used an eight iron and i did land on the green so i am having a downhill putt but as you as i mentioned before over was bunker and short well if you're gonna miss it you definitely want to miss it short but anyway i just left that a tad bit short so had a tap in par so let's move on to the next hole which is a par 4 so this is a long hole as you can see here this is a front there's a bunker right in the middle there which I can reach the bunker on the right I can reach as well and the bunkers on the left I cannot reach water down the left side which many men will be able to reach but for me it's out of reach for me so the driver definitely the water does not come in play and a ton of bunkers and a pretty narrow green so you do definitely do want to hit good shots here. This is not an easy hole. From here, you can see the bunker that I was talking about. The center bunker, I'm able to carry over it. The bunker on the right is reachable, but the bunker on the left is not. So for a safe shot, ideally you would want to aim over the center bunker if you're able to carry that. Of course, you do need to know your distance and how far it is to carry that to make sure that you are able to carry that because you do not want to be in that bunker. It is a pot bunker and you'll be hitting a really long club. It's about 220 to the green from there, so you definitely do not want to go in there. So if you're not able to carry that bunker, you might want to hit something short of that bunker. If not, for me, I just carry over it. And over to the right side, you do. I did not hit a very good shot there, so I do have quite a long club into the green, but especially I'm hitting a hybrid here which is not the easiest as I said this green is pretty narrow as you could see just now there are bunkers down the right side and the left side and water down the left as well on this hole as well for certain pin positions missing it on the right gives yourself an almost impossible chip today it's not too bad because the pin is in the center but when the pin is behind it does become very very difficult to chip if you miss on the right side which brings another problem because you can't miss on the left side so on holes like this you really need to determine whether you're playing smart golf or playing scared golf or just straight up playing stupid golf. If the pin was behind the slope, as I mentioned, as you can see where Diane is standing on the right side there, there is actually a bunker and if the pin is behind that, it gets very, very difficult to chip over that bunker and stop the ball. That is why I mentioned that if the pin was behind, this is an almost impossible green if you are missing on the right side. So the next hole is a par 5. It is actually OB down the left side and there are bunkers down the left side of the fairway as well and bunkers down the right. The bunkers down the right are too far to reach from today's tee box but those on the left are reachable. There is a bunker out there maybe about 80, 80, 60 yards, 80 to 60 yards depending on where the pin is. 
to the green so that is a pretty difficult bunker to be in and a few short of the green as well. So as I mentioned from today's tee box, those bunkers on the right are not reachable. Those bunkers on the left are reachable depending on the bounce and the kick that you have. But because it is early in the morning, I did not think that my driver was going to get there. So I am hitting a driver here. And the reason why I said from today's tee box is because sometimes the tee box is put in front, which is just past the cart path in front of us, as you can see in, in this clip. So from that tee box, I actually do play a three wood. So it really depends on the position of the tee box for today. So because today's was behind, I'm able to hit a driver and just hit it down towards the right side there. And as I said, short of those bunkers, so all good. For the next shot, I'm hitting a 5 foot. So the reason why I hit a 5 foot here is because, first of all, it is a little bit of an uphill slope, so I am anticipating a bit of a draw. With a 3 wood, I'm afraid that I might be able to reach those bunkers on the left side, which I mentioned just now, which is about 60 to 80 yards to the pin, depending on the pin position, which is not an ideal bunker shot for me. And I think it's quite a difficult bunker shot for anybody. So it's definitely not ideal to put yourself in that position. And that is why I rather hit a 5 wood. But in reality, you can really hit any club you want on this for this second shot. And as you can see here, I actually ended up in this divot. And I'm towards the front of the divot, which makes it very difficult because it is a little bit caved in because of the previous divot that was, well, the divot that I landed in. So it does make it very difficult to hit a clean shot here, especially because it is a 90 yard shot. So I was actually hitting a 52 degree wedge and I made, made a rookie mistake of only bringing one club. So I think I should have definitely be hitting a 48 degree just to be able to get it further out there. I did not hit a bad shot. It just caught that corner and bounced into the bunker. But as you can tell, I took a huge divot and that's why it did not reach the distance that I wanted it to. So I ended up in this bunker here, which is a pretty difficult bunker shot, as you can see. Main goal here is to make sure that you are getting out of the bunker and onto the green. So these are one of those shots where I tell a lot of people, if you're not confident with your bunker shots, just go out towards the right side because there's so much green there. Making sure that you carry not only this bunker, but the bunker in front of you is very, very crucial and very difficult for a lot of people. Not saying that I'm super good at it, I do have to hit a really good shot to make sure I get it out of there. So please make sure that you make the right decision on shots like that. But anyway, let's move on to the next hole which is a par 3. So for par 3 is one of the things that, well, safe versus smart or whatever. Obviously, if you're playing smart golf and if you're... First thing you need to make sure is that your distance is correct. Over here, you can see there's bunkers short. The pin is tucked left today. So the bunkers are right in front of the pin. There are bunkers short and there's bunker over as well. So you do need to make sure the first thing you do is get the right distance. I pulled mine a little bit so I'm left of the green, but I ended up not in a bad position. But yeah, always making sure for par threes, I think the main thing is making sure that your distance is good. So let's move on to the next hole, which is a par five. So for this par five, bunkers left and right, both are reachable. Another bunker out there, which is about 150 or 170 to the pin, I believe. And then water in front of the green and bunkers down the left side. So for this hole, I do hit a driver. And again, it depends. You can't really see the terrain on this GPS, but depending on the kick that you get, you can actually get about 30 yards more if you hit the down slope. So it really depends on the bounce on certain holes here. But again, let's talk about playing safe versus smart. Sorry, safe versus scared. So if I'm playing safe golf here, for instance, if I were to hit a three wood off the tee, first of all, I would have to consider, okay, obviously if I hit a three wood, I would not be able to go for the green, which is fine. It's not an easy green to go for anyway, but also I must consider why am I wanting to hit a three wood? So why do I not want to hit a driver? Is it because the hazards are really in play? Are they really going to, is there a big chance that I'm going to hit them? Or is it because I'm not confident because there's OB down the left side and my miss is a left shot? So you really do need to evaluate the way you're thinking. And this will really not only help you, well, make better decisions, but also understand why you sometimes make mistakes. So sometimes, for instance, when you are making a decision like hitting a three wood off the tee, not because you know that you know, for instance, maybe your driver can't carry a bunker 
or it's going to make a bunker come into play but you're hitting a through because you don't want to hit the driver because you're scared of hitting the driver that makes a huge difference because you not only are scared to hit the driver you're scared of the outcome of the driver so you're not actually scared of hitting the driver you are more scared to produce the outcome that you do not desire with the driver so i think this is a very important distinction distinction to make when you're making when to to realize when you're making decisions when you in your head because it not only affects the outcome of the shot first of all if you're not confident you're not going to hit a good shot but it also brings the element of doubt in your head so in your head you're probably thinking i cannot miss left because the left is ob so i do not want to hit a driver so unless you are hitting a shot that you are 100% confident is going to go right or go straight no matter what you're already thinking about what you do not want to do which is to go left and this is something to pay attention to when you th- when this shot when these thoughts come into your mind do you end up hitting bad shots are you committed to your shot so i think it's very very important to pay attention to why you make the decisions that you do so i think there's a big difference between playing safe and playing smart and playing scared golf so when you play scared golf you're hitting something because you're afraid to hit something else and you're afraid of maybe a hazard or you're maybe you're just afraid of doing something with a club that you dislike whereas if you're playing smart golf you are actually just hitting a shot because that's giving you the highest percentage so that's why sometimes you don't hit driver it's not because you're afraid to go into a hazard or something like that but maybe the chances of you going to a hazard is higher with a driver because of where your ball is going to end up landing or finishing so i think there is a big distinction between playing smart golf and playing stupid or well scared golf actually i think a great example is a player such as aria who is very known for not hitting a driver and a lot of people might say that you know it's all mental which to a certain extent that's true but i also think that she's actually playing smart golf and not scared golf because she knows that to be honest if she's not confident with a driver the difference between a driver and a three wood let's say it's probably not going to be a very big difference and also she's taking a lot of the doubt out of her mind because i feel if you think about it you only hit maximum of 14 drives for 14 holes if it's a par 72 so taking that obstacle out of your head and just being more confident is going to help her play better this hole right here is a par 4 as you can see bunkers on the left and right and for me my driver can reach those bunkers on the left side and they are pretty high so it really depends and my bunker does not have the distance to carry those bunkers sorry my driver does not have the distance to carry those bunkers so that is why i hit a three wood here because my three wood would be short of those bunkers whereas if i were to hit a driver i would either have to really smash it or hit it down towards the right side and play a draw and if you miss it right you're going in the water so for me i know that i'm hitting a three wood here because it is honestly the safer shot my driver can't go over the bunker the fairway is only about 10 yards wide if i were to hit a driver for me so i decide to hit a three wood here instead and give myself a 30 yard fairway as opposed to a 10 yard fairway so it really depends on the decisions you really have to evaluate why do you want to hit a certain club so if you go on a tee box and you're thinking i don't think i should be hitting a driver here you really need to think about why why don't you want to hit driver here is it because you can't carry a bunker or is it because your hazard comes into reach or is it because you're scared to do something that you don't want to do you're scared of the outcome of the shot so that is really what we are trying to avoid here to play better golf you need to stop thinking about the outcome so it's always good to think about you know maybe all the hazards that could come into play because obviously if they are there and they're hazards you do want to pay attention to them because they're there you know and you don't want to make a silly mistake by not thinking about it and end up being in the hazard so thinking about hazards is okay but then you need to make a decision and commit to the decision not because of the outcome that it might possibly get but because that's the best possible decision to make and to finish off my rant what an amazing birdie so let's go on to the next hole which is a par 3 again as i said with par 3s i think the most important thing is always focusing on the distance control as you can see here there's nothing out to the right side and bunkers in front of the left side but the pin today is behind those bunkers so the main imp- most important thing is always distance for par 3s i think that especially on this green here if you notice it's actually pretty wide it's just quite it's quite thin well i don't know how you would say it. it's quite short but pretty wide yeah i think that's the right th- term for it 
it's short but wide. So there is space in terms of left and right of the pin, but there's not much space in terms of the height of the green. So you do want to make sure that you get good distance. And a lot of people ask me about this. And they notice that even when I miss, I am mostly pin high. Not only does this give you a better chance to, obviously when you hit a good shot, you're going to get a better chance for a birdie, but also it gives you better misses as well. And you're always giving yourself a chance to putt for birdie. Even though I putted that a little bit too hard, it wasn't an easy putt. So, you know, sometimes you got to take what you get. So let's go to the last hole. See this last hole here, water down the entire right side, bunker down the left side. So what is the choice that you're going to make here for me? For certain, for on certain days, I do not hit a driver because it does not. I don't feel confident with it. I don't feel like it's going to give me a good shot, and it's okay to acknowledge that. You know, I know that sometimes for me, I fear the right side. So I, when I'm missing it right, I obviously do not want to hit a driver. So for me, I acknowledge that, and then what I do is commit to what I want to do. So for instance, on certain days, obviously today I, I am hitting a driver, but on certain days where I do not want to hit a driver, I would say okay. I'm going to hit a three with because I don't want to hit a driver. But then I would commit to it, pick a target, forget about the outcome, and just commit to the shot. So that is what you should be doing, not thinking about, oh, I didn't want to hit the driver because I didn't want to go in the water. But now I'm hitting a three with, I'm going to be shorter, I need to hit it harder. Oh, and what, I miss, what if I miss it in the water again? I might as well just hit a driver. So all these thoughts, thoughts are not beneficial for you, obviously, and they're not going to help your game. So I hope this makes a little bit more sense about what I'm talking about in terms of playing smart golf or safe golf versus playing scared golf. Playing scared golf is playing scared. Playing golf, being scared of the outcome and making decisions, being scared of the outcome. Instead, you should be playing to get the best possible outcome. So obviously, nothing is always going to work out the way we want it to all the time. So we can just give ourselves the best opportunity and do what we can with what we have.